I'd like to welcome those viewers who have just joined us from the Washington Pittsburgh game. I'm Merle Herman along with Paul Horning. We're in Denver, Colorado at Mile High Stadium. The Broncos scored early in the first quarter, and we're in that quarter right now on a 44 yard Elway touchdown pass. And right now, Rich Carlos is going to try to kick one from 51 yards out to give the Broncos a 10 run lead. The bare footer has plenty of distance, and he also has a 51 yard field goal. And that ties his longest field goal, 51 yards. He did it twice in 1986 and 1987. And we have a timeout in Denver. A minute, 50 seconds to go in the first quarter. Denver leads 10-0. This bugs for all that you do. This kickoff is sponsored by Budweiser, the king of beers. And the Broncos are leading by a score of 10 to nothing as Carlos gets ready to kick off. A bud's eye view of this kickoff. Going back deep, Curtis Adams, number 42, along with Jamie Holland, 86, Anthony Miller, 83. Carlos boots it from his own 35. He has kicked two out of the end zone. San Diego making a run back on this one with Jamie Holland and Will. Holland trying to get to the outside is chopped down at about the 16, possibly the 17-yard line. Good special team tackle by Kevin Guidry over there, a defensive back out of LSU, a rookie. Babe Laufenberg checking in with Jerry Rome, the offensive coordinator of the Chargers, as he comes on the field. As you can see, signed as a free agent prior to the 88 training camp. He bounced around a bit, but he never played it down in the NFL. But uh, he is playing plenty for San Diego now. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back in a moment. Merle, well, you may be looking at one of the next head coaches in the National Football League. That's Jerry Rome. He's the offensive coordinator for the Chargers. And I tell you, he's well respected around this league. And I really think jobs, and he, you know, they just can't keep ignoring. What this man has done, so I agree with you. I think it won't be long. He'll be a head man. First and ten, San Diego on the 16-yard line. Babe Laufenberg is the quarterback for the Chargers. Play action. Screen. Tip. Almost intercepted. Mecklenburg had his hands on the ball and almost pulled it back in. And I tell you, he saved a big play for San Diego. It was beautiful faking. And that's something you don't see in the National Football League, Merle. Quarterbacks do not fake well, usually, in, in the pro league. But this kid made a beautiful fake here, and he's got a screen set up on the right side. If Mecklenburg does not get his big left paw up there, that's a big play for San Diego. Great defensive play by Mecklenburg. He almost gets the interception. So it's second down for San Diego. I understand I, uh, a moment ago when I gave the score, I said uh, Denver's leading by 10 runs. You can tell I just came from a baseball stadium, can't you? <laughs> the handoff goes to Tim Spencer, the big back. At the 20, Freddie Gilbert, 90, the defensive left end, makes the hit, the three-year veteran from Georgia. In now case, we're going to show you the earlier touchdown. By Denver. Some of you must look at the great pass protection. Down the left side, by Gilbert on the defense, and Mark Jackson makes a great catch as the two goes on to the end zone, a 44-yard touchdown pass. There he is, Mark Jackson, his second touchdown catch of the year. And that was followed by Carlos' 51-yard field goal, the third of his career, by the way, from that distance. And so consequently, Denver leads by a score of 10 to nothing, and San Diego is third and long. Not quite seven. Incomplete by Laufenberg. Eric Sievers, 85, the tight end, covered by Jim Ryan, number 50, the outside linebacker, the dean of the defense, they call him. And it is fourth down for the Chargers of San Diego, and Ralph Mojinko will come in for his fourth punt. Well, that was just a poor pass by Laufenberg. Had his man open. Rulon Jones put the pressure on for Denver. He'll go in on passing situations. Rulon Jones, a nine-year veteran. Mojinko drives it downfield. Kevin Clark at the 42. Midfield. At the 49 of San Diego. He is tackled by Eric Sievers, a 38-yard punt. And with 35 seconds left to go in the first quarter, the Denver Broncos lead San Diego 10 to nothing. 
The opposing coaches who come in here to play Denver, I don't think agree with that. How about you, Paul Horning? Well, I don't agree with it at all. You look at Dan Reeves' record here at home. He's 36 and 7, 83 <laughs> percent with that home field advantage. I tell you, that home cooking's good for everybody. <laughs> Al Saunders took over San Diego's head coaching job in 1986 and he has an 11 and 13 mark last year he lost his first game won the next eight and then lost the next six but I tell you one thing this guy is going to be a coach in this league a long time the players respect him he's got a great personality and I just kind of admire him in the very little time I've seen him. inside handoff to Sammy Winder is going to lose about three Lee Williams on the stop and Lee Williams we take a look is really uh, as Coach Saunders told us last night, he's really our only first line football player that we have. Chip Banks hadn't signed. Here's we take the inside handoff with Winder. You'll see Lee Williams play off the block and make the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Lee Williams, 31 and a half sacks the last three years. He's really one of the great pass rushers in this league. He's out of Bethune Cookman in Florida, a school that has produced several NFL stars. We have come to the end of the first quarter here at Mile High Stadium. The Broncos over San Diego by 10, and we'll be right back. Merle Harmon and Pro Football Hall of Famer Paul Horning with you from Denver, Colorado. We played one quarter, and there's a look at the game statistically. Elway, of course, up in the air for 70 yards and a touchdown. Loppenberg. Having his problems in the first quarter. Dorsett is back. Will Hyde is back. Shotgun. Check that. Zoom is now in. Dorsett is not in. Elway throws on the run. It is caught by Jackson. Jackson down the sideline at the 18 yard line, brought down by Elvis Patterson. Number 34, the quarterback of the big gainer, gets the Broncos a first down to the San Diego 18. Well, Elway's going to hurt you when he's in the pocket, but I've always felt when you've got a quarterback like this with this much ability, once he gets outside that pocket, he becomes even more dangerous. And Elway is that. Look at this wonderful pitch down the right side, 34 yard pickup. Mark Jackson's having a pretty good first half here. Elway is now over the 100 yard mark in passing. We're just seconds into the second quarter. Dorsett and Winder are now the running backs, and John Elway wants a timeout. So something went wrong there. At least uh, Elway wanted to make sure that there was no misunderstanding. With the timeout, it's 10 to nothing, Denver. The Denver Broncos and Dan Reeves a 10 to nothing lead over the San Diego Chargers and the Broncos are marching like they're going to get more. Tony Dorsett and Sammy Winder are the running backs. Dorsett is now the tailback. Winder blocks on the corner. Dorsett makes his cut inside the block near the 10. Elvis Patterson makes the stop. It's a good move by our Tony Dorsett as we quickly update. Pittsburgh now it's a final Washington by one over Pittsburgh Buffalo over Miami a final nine to six another final San Francisco by three Chicago a winner over the Colts New Orleans an eight point winner today over Atlanta and Tampa Bay by the pack by three tied up second quarter three to three the Raiders are also tied up against Houston and Minnesota a touchdown over New England on second and two Dorsett first down and is down to the five yard line. Dorsett is having a very good first half in this game. Vincy Glenn, the free safety, had to make the hit. It'll be first and goal on the five for Denver. As we take a look at Dorsett, inside handoff, he's got the option to slip outside. This time he cuts back inside. Vincy Glenn on the stop by the Chargers. Dorsett now 34 yards and eight carries. We take a look at the Ticker Philadelphia touchdown over Cincinnati Kansas City and Seattle tied up and the Rams a four point lead over the Lions set all second quarter score first and goal for the Broncos on the San Diego five draw to Dorsett at the goal line and he is stopped a little bit short apparently Fawcett Chuck Fawcett the inside linebacker 
out of the University of Maryland stopped Dorsett just short of the goal line got help from Vincey Glenn number 25 a three year man from Indiana State second and goal for the Broncos Pat Kelly checks in big tight end six foot six two hundred fifty two pounds also Gerald Wilhite checks in and Dorsett gets a breather and the crowd's booing they want Dorsett to stay in the game <laughs> Short yardage, this is the way they go. Winder will be your deep back, and Gerald will height the up back, and they split out now. Second and goal. Right over the top. Touchdown. And he's in. So the Broncos go up 16 to nothing. Steve Sewell is the lead blocker. He had set on the wing right. You saw him in motion. And he made his cut, and Will Height went right over the top. You'll see it. Well, he does so many things. Steve Sewell, four-year player out of University of Oklahoma, very valuable man in this Bronco offense. We're going to take another. He catches the ball well. He blocks well. He goes on the wing. He runs the football. He catches it. As we take a look at Will Height scoring his first touchdown of the year. Gary Kubiak, the number two quarterback out of Texas A&M, will hold for Carlos for the extra point try at the south end of Mile High Stadium. And Carlos is automatic. So the Broncos are in front by 17 with 12 minutes and 9 seconds left to play in the first half in Denver. Back at Mile High Stadium, I'm Merle Harmon along with Pro Football Hall of Famer Paul Horning. Paul, there's no doubt about it. The Broncos have got their act back together today. Well, they didn't look too good last week, but this week it's just what the doctor ordered. Elway is thrown for one touchdown, and uh, after that uh, beautiful one-yard run by Will Height hitting in there, it looks as if Denver has everything under control so far. So the Broncos and this latest scoring drive take uh, 49 yards on six plays to get the job done. Will Height going over for the touchdown as Carlos booms it downfield. It'll be taken by Curtis Adams and Adams breaks the tackle. He is out across the 30. A great job. Anthony Miller. I'm sorry folks. Anthony Miller came up with the ball. 83 in place of 43. Very dangerous out of the University of Tennessee. Had one kick called back into preseason Anthony look at that wonderful move on the inside and Anthony Miller is going to be a dangerous return man in this league take a look at Al Saunders over on the outside he can't get his dobber down this is a very young football team and they don't have to worry about hitting you they will hit you and as the game goes on you're going to see a lot of hard tackling on this San Diego Charger team they play all out and quite reckless in fact even though they're trailing 17 to nothing they just don't have the folks as we take a look at Michael Brooks who was taken up on the play and he's walking off under his own power Miller's return was 31 yards and so the San Diego Chargers down by 17 with 1157 to go in the first half here in Denver the Broncos as we mentioned earlier have not lost back to back games in one and two meaning at the beginning of the season since 1968 they were very much aware of that yesterday at the workout good play action fake by Loppenberg he's going for it all he's got Miller intercepted Castillo picks it up takes it away and he is out of bounds at about the 32 and for a young quarterback this is the way you learn it's a tough lesson to learn but he had Anthony Miller was wide open on a post pattern for six points and it was just a tremendous move by Jeremiah Castile the six year pro out of Alabama look he's got him beat by two and this long pass just a little bit underthrown. what a great interception by Mr. Castile 12th career interception and Denver has the football back in fine field position at the 33 yard line and now the San Diego defense is going to get another workout. Al Saunders, very, very proud of the effort given by his team. Absolutely. Andrew. And he realizes, he told us, this kid's young, Laufenberg, he's got a lot of pride in his own ability, and he thinks he can get the job done. That pass, almost six points. Screen to Dorset, flags are down all over the place. I tell you, if you don't think this game is a game of inches, you know, Merle, that ball had been thrown maybe a yard and a half further. It could have been six points. 
holding call against Denver. You know, we talked about a moment ago about Al Saunders, and he, he is pleased with the effort that his team is giving. Uh, you know, Incredible foul against the offense, holding. Declined. I think he said 64, Billy Bryan, uh, the center. What we're going to say about Al Saunders, he, he knows that he is under man. He's got all these young people, 18, but he says, as long as we keep giving an all-out effort, we're going to improve, we're going to get better. It'll be first down and 20 on the holding call. The ball going back to the 23-yard line. The shotgun for Elway. We might be seeing Mark Malone a little bit later on for San Diego. Sewell on the handoff. At the 24, Joe Phillips, the nose tackle, makes the, the uh, hit. Malone has not played yet for uh, San Diego, did not get in the game last week. And we really haven't talked about it too much, but Billy Ray Smith, 1987 most valuable player, one of the best linebackers in the league, is not suited up today. And you don't think that hurts your defense. Out of the trap, wide open. Nateel gets a block down at the 35. Jackson turns blocker number 80. Mark Jackson, the other wideout. But we have an injury across the way, and Will Heights a little slow getting up, but he is okay. Look at Elway, just a little reverse pivot there. He gets loose. Ricky Nateel was wide open over the middle and he got it right on the numbers. He comes back against the grain here. Almost gets loose from Elvis Patterson, number 34, who makes the stop. And look who's warming up on the sidelines. That's Mark Malone over there. We got him, of course, in a trade from Pittsburgh. And I know he's happy to be there. After an 11-yard pickup, it is still third down seven for Denver. Middle to the tight end, Orson Mobley. Incomplete. Gary Plummer, number 50, the inside linebacker, covering the big tight end, and it is fourth down for the Broncos. Yeah, you heard him hit, hitting him on the numbers. He hit him right on the leg, on the knee. Mobley was not ready for it. Mike Horan, a five year veteran from Long Beach State, handles a kicking for Denver. 44.8 last week, 41 yards a year ago for the season. Lionel James. We'll be back deep for San Diego. James from his own 21. Oh, oh I heard that, and I felt that. <laughs> he gets 10 to the 31, a 43-yard kick, and the Chargers will have the ball at their own 31-yard line. Denver on top by 17. 10.08 to go in the half. Mark Malone makes his debut as a San Diego Charger in a regular NFL season game. Malone came from Pittsburgh. Eight years. It's a big kid, 6'4, 220. And I tell you, if this stiff doesn't work out, he can get a job doubling for Tom Selleck. Can he, though? First down on the San Diego 31. About two by Anderson, maybe three at the most. Freddie Gilbert, number 90, the defensive left end from the University of Georgia, out there to make the tackle. There's Malone's 87 stats, six touchdowns, 19 intercepts. Gain of two, second down, eight. That's why he's here in San Diego. He comes from the San Diego area, playing his college ball at Arizona State. You know, Pittsburgh, he really had to go through it with the fans in Pittsburgh. Look at the difference in passing yardage here. That's the difference of this ball game right now. 110 yard passing for Denver. Over. On the slant end, it is complete to Quinn Early, number 87, the wideout. Mark Haynes, number 36, had the coverage and he got almost it up for a first down. A little bit short. Got about seven. Good coverage, good pitch, and good catch here. Just a little. Man to man on the outside. Watch a quick post pattern. He plants off that right foot. He's open, and Malone delivers the football right on target. Third down one coming up from the Chargers, who trail by 17. Merle Harmon and Hall of Famer Paul Horning with you in Denver at Mile High Stadium. Ooh, what a hit on Anderson. 
Jackson. No, he didn't get it. By Carl Mecklenburg, who met him in the hole and really popped him. Oh, he loves it, too. Look at that smile on his face. Carl Mecklenburg loved this game. He loves this game of defense. And you must play defensive football with emotion. And watch this emotion by Carl Mecklenburg. Defense is a game of emotion. On offense, you have to have it a lot more controlled emotion to play it. But defense, you just got to be have a reckless abandon for the game, and that's what Mecklenburg has. And Mecklenburg stopped San Diego short of a first down. It is fourth down. And coming on to punt is Moshenko for San Diego. Left puts the ball down the field to Kevin Clark. And he returns it for about two. Downfield, Jamie Holland on the coverage and stopped him. They'll move the ball back, however, to about the 20-yard line. Ooh, look out. There goes a flag. Clark threw the <laughs> Clark threw the threw the ball back. And side judge Larry Nimmers was right behind him and got the ball in the face. And I think that was an inadvertent slip here by Mr. Clark. He didn't really want to throw it right in his face. But of course, I think it's a good call. You can't let that happen. You've got to be in control of the situation. They don't want to let this game get out of hand. And you can see he didn't mean it. He was a little bit hot of the rough treatment the San Diego special teams had given him on that punt return. As we got a Mr. Miller down. Pat Miller being attended to at the 45-yard line. The 27 receiving team. The crowd reacts. Clark gets an unsportsmanlike conduct call. We're getting a little bit of a breakup on our mic from referee Dick Jorgensen, so we'll try to fill you in as best we can here on some of the calls with all this noise. Well, now let's watch. Watch where his forward progress stops. Now right here he stopped. Now the whistle's blown. There's a little piling on. Now everybody should ease up right now, but but Clark doesn't like it. Gives him a nice, a nice little elbow in the stomach there. Uh oh, wait a minute. It did. Good call. Good call. I don't know if that was inadvertent or not. It looked like he was throwing it right for its nose. At the Denver 12, all the way goes to work. Dorsett goes to work. And so does number 22, Gil Bird, who stretches him out across the field and runs him out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. So Dorsett got about five. Boy, nothing would suit Dorsett any better, Merle, than have a 100-yard day here rushing. It's been a while. You notice that sun shield that he's wearing? Some of the, some of the players are using that now. Dorsett says he didn't want anybody to be looking in his eyes to know which way he's going to go. Paul, this game is getting sophisticated. It sure is. I tell you, they've got more gimmicks now and equipment and the whole, the whole, the whole game. No way. Natia, incomplete. Flag down. We'll see what the penalty flag is all about. Flag down. The penalty was... Let's take a look at the 10 minute ticker. The Jets over Cleveland by three. The Raiders having another good day, 21 to 7 over Houston. And New England trails Minnesota now by two touchdowns. Cincinnati behind Philadelphia by a touch. Kansas City, same against Seattle. All these second quarter scores. And Detroit leads the Rams 10 to 7. That's a surprise. Cleveland is having trouble getting that offense going, and now it's uh, even like been curtailed. Chop block, number 64 and 72, offense at the distance, still second down. The Broncos are penalized. What is going to say with Boney, Bernie Kosar out now? They're really having problems getting the offense going. Well, Gary Daniels has said he's going to step in there, and he thinks he can do the job, but evidently today he's been pretty tough moving that football. So a half the distance penalty takes the ball back inside the 10 at the eight yard line. Dorsett and Winder had 14 yards to make up here to get uh, Denver a first down. Dorsett has come wide to the right. The inside hand off to Winder. The play is read by Les Miller. We have a flag thrown as Miller dumps Winder at about the one yard line. Complete malfunction in the blocking assignments up front. Les Miller, six foot eight. Listen to this, 293 pounds. I tell you, you almost have to cross block and trap block these big guys now. Because if you try to block them straight ahead, you just can't move them. There you see big number 69, third year pro at 40. Hayes State in Kansas. 
They got the Broncos back inside the five. We have eight minutes and 13 seconds left to play in the first half. Full start before the snap, left tackle, still second down. He not only had a false start, he missed the block too. So, and that's Jim Jariga, who's playing in place of Dave Stutter, who usually plays the left tackle position for the Broncos, of course. And he's had a knee injury in the offseason uh, last year, and he has not played yet. Second down, 18. Will Hunt and Sewell are the running back. The shotgun. Zips it to the teal. He is out of bounds inside the 20, short of the first down. Roy Bennett, 23, had the coverage on the play. Now watch Elway here. He goes back and he see he keys the coverage out there. Roy Bennett, a rookie from Jackson State, got his man out there all by himself, and he just makes a little turnout move, Ricky Natil, and he's wide open. Boy, I tell you, when he lets it go all the time in the world, he stands right in the pocket. And when you see a quarterback throw on rhythm, when they drop back in the pocket and they look and they just let it go right away, you know the receiver is wide open. Pat Miller has gone for x-rays, and so has Mark Jackson. And again, the San Diego defense swarms all the way. And Mike Charles, number 71, Joe Phillips, 75, applying the pressure. Got two nose tackles in there. Got the big ones in there. Mike Charles, 6'4, 296, and Phillips, 6'5, 275. And that's what I was saying. You try to block these guys straight ahead, Merle, you need some help. It'll be fourth down. Today. Fourth down and four as Mike Haran comes in to do the kicking. Lionel James will be back deep for the Chargers. Well, that was the worst offensive series so far today for the Broncos. They they didn't get anything accomplished in that draft. And you got to give that swarming defense of San Diego the defense of the Broncos uh, all week said what is it uh, what are they doing as that ball is kicked out of bounds wasn't the best one there he kind of shanked it off the left side it's going to be marked somewhere up near midfield 45 yard line 47 48 49 right on the midfield stripe now is where they mark it and we've got a timeout Denver leads by 17. Elway pass to Jackson for 44 yards and a Denver touchdown in the first quarter. Carlos a 51-yard field goal here in the second quarter. Gerald Wilhite for the one-foot line, 17 to nothing Denver. Play action with Malone for San Diego to the near side incomplete. Arthur Cox the tight end. Was the intended receiver Andre Townsend 61, Greg Craig in 71. The two big. Well, the right end and nose tackle of Denver on the defensive unit applying the pressure. You know, we weren't being facetious a moment ago when we said the Broncos were saying all week, what are those guys doing on defense? That's right. And that's what uh, San Diego wants people to think. What are we doing on defense? Well, they overshift their linemen so much. They overshift to the weak side and to the strong side. And the strong side means wherever the tight end lines up. So it's tough. Look at this step. 128 yards passing for the Broncos. Chargers only 12. Malone shotgun inside handoff to Lionel James and James has a first down and more and he stumbles and goes down after he had broken a last tackle. Mike Harden and Dennis Smith had shots at him and the little guy gets all the way down to the 27 yard line. Beautiful move by Lionel James here. This is only the third first down for San Diego is going to pick up 23 yards here out of the shotgun a little draw and a trap blocking up front and Lionel James does the rest. This little guy had over 4,000 all-purpose yards the last three years. Look at it, four years. Lionel James has got San Diego in great field position. Mark Malone, quarterbacking San Diego for the first time, hits uh, number 82. And that would be Rod Bernstein, and that is his first catch for San Diego. I would say this is a great pitch here. Mark Malone out of the pocket. He was covered by three or four orange jerseys. We take a look at Babe Laufenberg now giving the signals in for Mark Malone. Good teamwork here, of course. And that brings up a point. A lot of quarterbacks, when they take away their job, they want to get traded now. <laughs> it's very unusual. We'll get into that a little bit later, too. Malone got 20 on the play. First and goal, San Diego. This is Anderson. Uh -oh. No game. Mark Haynes, 36, got him on the corner. His responsibility is to force everything inside from that corner position. And he does it as well as anyone in this league. Mark Haynes, 
Here comes a signal in from Rothenberg on the sidelines. You know, we we're talking about Rod Bernstein a moment ago. That was the first time that he had caught a pass this year for San Diego. He had not been in any action at all as far as uh, touching the football last week against Los Angeles, either running or. There he is lined up on the wing there. He's going in motion. He's the H-back. Malone with time. Flag down. Inside the five, but the marker is down at the three. Rulon Jones, 75. Simon Fletcher, 43. Flushed him out. Chased him out of bounds. We'll see if the play stands. Well, one thing about this Bronco defense, when they're in trouble and they want to get some pressure on the pass, passer, they're going to bring in Rulon Jones. It's thrown for offensive pass interference. However, the ball was not thrown. Therefore, we're going to pick it up. No foul. Third down. All right. The call offensive pass interference, but the ball had not been thrown yet. And of course he was scrambling around the right side and he picked up some valuable yardage inside the five. Ball's going to be placed right at the three yard line. So Mark Malone. There's 82 right there. Now he's trying to block. He sees Malone's trying to run. Nothing wrong with that. So since Malone carried the ball, the interference call did not go. We have an injury report for you in a moment. Tim Spencer, the biggest back for San Diego, now on the field at 223 pounds in San Diego, wants a timeout. Mark Malone wants seven points. Sure does. And Mark Jackson wants to get back in his football game, but he's got a fractured collarbone, so he's going to be out for quite a while. And that's a terrific blow to the Broncos. We take a look. Updating Cleveland. Behind by three with the Jets, and that is a big, big surprise. The Raiders, two touchdowns over Houston, and New England trails Minnesota by two touchdowns. All second quarter scores. And the Philadelphia Cincinnati game is locked up in the second quarter, and Seattle now ahead of Kansas City and Detroit over the Rams. And it looks like the Houston Ash, the Houston Oilers, rather, are really going to miss Warren Moon. They sure, they sure are. And I tell you, this Denver Bronco team is going to miss Mark Jackson now. We don't know how serious that collarbone is. Of course, if we get a report, it is broken. So that means at least four to six weeks if he's lucky. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the prize of private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or the use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Denver Broncos and the National Football League is prohibited. This game is the property of the National Football League, the Denver Broncos, and the San Diego Chargers, all rights reserved. And San Diego's got to get seven points out of here and get back in his football game, Merle. Third and goal. Not Nothing that went wrong on the pattern. Eric Seavers, the tight end, broke to the outside, and the ball was thrown to the inside. But Seavers was really covered. He sure was. And they're going to have to settle for three points. I tell you, that, yeah. Mr. Saunders is not happy with that. You get that football inside the five-yard line and got a couple plays. You're behind by more than two touchdowns. All you're thinking is six points. You, you've got to put it in here. Vince, but they're going to settle for three. Vince Abbott for a 20-yarder. And San Diego posts three. So with five minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first half, the Chargers score for the first time today on that field goal by Vince Abbott, the second-year man from Fullerton. Moshenko doing the holding for him. And so the spirits of the San Diego Chargers, at least, should be lifted a little bit because they played well in the last couple of series, Paul. But see, you can look back on this uh, when the game's over with, as here's like coaches think. Well, we had the football down there in the first half. We had a chance to put seven points on the board. When you don't take advantage of that, uh, they still two touchdowns behind now, and that, of course, gives that Bronco, a Bronco offense, a little cushion. There's Mark Malone on the sidelines. We take another look at Dan Reeves. Looks mighty dapper over there on the sidelines, doesn't he? Oh, he always does. I tell you, I like that. So the Broncos, who are reversing their play of a week ago when they just didn't seem to do anything right. We talk about the winningest team. The Denver Broncos certainly are one of the winningest teams of the 80s. The Bears, of course, have had tremendous success under Mike Ditka in a Super Bowl. 
victory and of course we know about the 49ers and all the postseason trips they take as well as the Broncos who have gone to the last two and the Redskins who seem to be a perennial now when it comes to Super Bowls. And Vic Sabbath will do the kicking off and drives that ball to Ken Bell at the goal line. Bell hurdling, getting an extra 10, 12, 13 on second and third effort. Ken Bell, the third-year man from Boston College, has averaged almost 19 yards on the returns this year. Beautiful run here by Ken Bell. I tell you, he was hit inside just about the 20-yard line. The rest he does on his own. He gets it out to the 34-yard line and gives that Bronco offense beautiful field position. So the ball is spotted on the 33 yard line. And Elway and company take over. Dorsett splits to the right. Linebacker comes out to cover him. The other way to Natiel. Look at that move by Natiel. Natiel picks up a big gainer, and Chuck Fawcett, the linebacker, had to pull him down. A good job by Fawcett. But a big first down pass and the ball at the 38 yard line on a 28 yard pickup. Oh, what a move by Ricky Natiel. Not only one move, watch these moves. He gets Gil Bird out here, one, two. Then he comes back to the safety man on the inside. That's Elvis Patterson. He drops him and then down the sidelines with that great speed. He did it all on his own. And boy, what a dangerous receiver. He could take a little hook pattern and turn it into a big play, bro. Dorsett the tailback. First and ten on the 38-yard line of San Diego. Dorsett, after a yard or so, stopped by Chuck Fawcett. Stops Dorsett with help from Gilbert, number 22. Tony Dorsett, 32 yards last week. Completely different ball player this week. Even last week, you know, they had a they had a special offense set up for him. But the key to it was Clarence K, the tight end. They lined him up as the H back in the backfield. First couple of series, it looked like the Dorsett was going to emerge. The Dorsett of old. Then K goes out to change everything. K went down with an injury in the first quarter. He is not suited up today, and that's a big part of this Bronco offense. Clarence K, the big blocking tight end. Second and eight. Dorsett goes barreling through across the 30, almost to the 27, and Joe Phillips has to stop him. And Tony D is having a day. He's getting very close to moving into third place ahead of Franco Harris. And those rushing yards, he needs 53 yards, and he makes bursts off the right side there. Good blocking up front by Ken Lanier and Keith Carts on the right side. 12 carries, 53 yards. He is now number three. And Jim Brown is staring him in the face. First down on the 27-yard line. Dorset and Winder are the backs. Dorset again. 22-yard line. My goodness, Paul Harding. You know what looks like a different Denver team. You know what it is? It's the offensive line up front. Believe me, Merle, they're moving that San Diego Charger defense two and three yards back. Every one of them, Jim Jariga, Keith Bishop, Billy Bryan, the center. On the right side, it's Keith Carts and Ken Lanier. What a job. And this is for Tony Garcett. Second down. Four, Denver leading by a score of 17 to three. Dorsett again, touchdown gone. What blocking! I gotta tell you again, Moore. What wonderful blocking off the right side. They love it. 81 yards for Dorsett today. That's his 86th touchdown. And he does it from 21 yards out. Watch this. Watch the blocking. Little stutter step to the left side. A little counter, and nobody's going to touch him. My heavens, they wiped out everybody on the right side. Bishop pulling. Got a block. Ken Lanier on the right side. Carlos adds the extra point. Two minutes, 57 seconds to go in the first half. And the Broncos behind the running of Dorsett. 
go in for the touchdown and now lead it 24 to 3. One more time. I tell you, also, I just picked this up on that wide angle shot. Sammy Winder just grazes one guy on the outside. Watch him on the inside. Then he gets in front of somebody else. Just everybody. Beautiful blocking on the right side. So the Broncos answer the challenge of the drive of the San Diego Chargers, which netted the Chargers a field goal. The Broncos come roaring back with the touchdown. You know, in a lot of players, when a guy like Tony Dorsett comes into your team, you've got to take your hat off to Sammy Winder. You know, he says, look, I know they're going to pay this guy a lot of money. I'll go up front and block for him. That, that's all right with me. I'll do my job. If that's what you want me to do, I'll do it. There's not too many football players with that big a heart because most running backs like to run the football. And this kid is doing what he has to do. Sammy Winder watching him yesterday, he's something else. He was running plays in his street clothes. They were just kind of walking through plays yesterday. He always has the big cowboy hat on. And Carlos kicks this one out of the end zone. And once again, I'll tell you, it's so important today to have a kicker, Merle, who can boot that football into the end zone. There's not a lot of kickers can put it into the end zone from the 35-yard line. And that's a tremendous edge because that defense is working against the offense right at that 20-yard line. And uh, normally that is a big disadvantage for your offense. Two minutes and 35 seconds on the last drive for 67 yards on six plays. And the big one, of course, Dorsett's first touchdown as a Denver Bronco in the 86th of his career. And here come the Chargers. At halftime, Lynn Berman, Paul McGuire, and NFL Live with scores and highlights of all the games throughout the NFL today. Malone swings one incomplete, intended for Curtis Adams coming out of the backfield number 42 it'll be second and 10 of the 20 for the Chargers that should have been a completion that was a poor pass and also was a poorly run pattern by Mr. Curtis Adams he was kind of uh, loafing a little bit on the right side wasn't running full speed he was wide open this should have been completed Loffenberg has signaled the play in Mark Malone taking over when Loffenberg was unable to move the Chargers Miller splits wide to the left side now for San Diego and Quinn early is to the right. Both rookies and they can move it. Bernstein in motion. Bernstein running a deep pattern. They go underneath them. Lionel James and James picks up big yardage up near the 40. Mike Harden 31 the free safety and strong safety Randy Robbins number 48. Bring down Lionel the little train James. I tell you. Watch him. Here he comes out of the backfield. We got him isolated. He hooks up here. Watch Jim Ryan come up, and he turns to the inside. This is what James does so well. He defeats that first tackler. Picks up 20 yards. Gets a little bit shy of the 40. So San Diego coming right back now with the offense led by Mark Malone. Two minutes, 13 seconds to go in the first half. Malone going deep down the side and looking for Jimmy Holland. Covered by Jeremiah Castile. Or Castillo's picked up his coverage. You know, sometimes when you play in a defense and you're on the opposite side of one of the great defensive backs like Mark Haynes, you become better just by competitiveness. You know, everybody writes so much about Mark Haynes. And look at this beautiful coverage here by Jeremy Castillo down the left side. He's got Jamie Holland covered like a glove. A little more contact allowed this year. And the simplest way to explain the allowing of more contact would be to say, they can do a little bumping and yeah. running as long as they're looking back. They just quit calling pass interference. Is that yeah. what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Tied in Cox. Sets right. Malone looks for James. Incomplete. Flag down. Michael Harden is injured. He is getting up very slowly in the secondary. I tell you, Mike Harden leveled Steve Largent last week. There's the bump and run. Look at this. That's past five yards down the line of scrimmage. That was Jamie Holland and Jeremia Castillo. And defensive holding is called against the Denver Broncos. Number 28, defense, five-yard penalty, first down, two-minute warning. And you saw it. That was a... And so Castillo is hit with the penalty, and we'll be right back. Look at the career catchers, Merle. 
Now the Cox down, that's Arthur Cox. He's a six-year veteran. The rest are rookies. Wow. Actually rookies. Very, very young football team. Mark Malone on first down with two minutes to play. Right over the middle. And wide open to his tight end, Arthur Cox. Cox trying to hold on to the football and keep charging for more yards. Gets down to the 35, and a flag is thrown across the way. 20-yard pickup. And I'll tell you one thing about those defensive backs. They didn't want any part of trying to stop this load. He's 277 pounds. Watch a little delay. He's usually used as a blocker, so this is going to be open. Look at him. Now watch, watch him take dead aim at these defensive backs. He just runs over three or four of them. <laughs> I don't blame him. I wouldn't want any part of him either. We had we had a delay of the game call against Denver, which uh, was declined as the play was already run. At least that was the initial signal. How could they do that? We uh, have. They're going to take the play. If we take a look at how Saunders over on the sideline. Yeah, but wouldn't the delay be called? No, okay, the signal is, okay, we just had it clarified from the sideline. They had too many players. The arms folded by uh, Dick Jorgensen, but that, you know, one signal has to cover two or three different uh, infractions, and so we have it from the sideline. They had 12 players on the field. So San Diego takes the play at the 35. side to Lionel James and he is brought down before he can get out of bounds he was trying to get out to stop the clock Castile made the hit on the 28 yard line and we have a minute and 33 seconds left to go in the first half and the clock is running hurry up offense this is a two minute drill everything's automatic Mecklenburg. and the pressure is on James makes the catch he does get out of bounds at around the 10 yard line and that stops the clock with a minute and 14 seconds left to go in the first half. I tell you, he's exciting Lionel James. Hey, we take a look at Lionel he delays out of the backfield here and I tell you he's wide open. He gets 18 yards on the pickup minute 14 to go. Right. Denver leading it by a score of 24 to 3 10 points in the first quarter. Two touchdowns in the second quarter, and the first by Tony Dorsett as a Denver Bronco. I don't tell you how imperative it is for San Diego to put seven points on the board here if they're going to have any hopes of coming back in the second half. And Mark Malone wants a timeout here, or he may not be able to hear. He is going to the sideline. We'll be back right after this. of uh, Mile High Stadium. I thought Malone was going to ask the official for time because he couldn't hear, but he did go ahead and call a timeout and went to the sideline. Rulon Jones now checks in. Merle, he's one of the great pass rushers that they've had in this. Remember the orange crush defense oh, a year yes. ago? Well, he's in right now. Nine-year pro from Utah State. Now he has lined up over the left tackle. Malone, six out of ten, 91 yards since coming into the second quarter. The fans cut loose again. Malone with lots of time. Out of bounds. Minute five left to play. Chased out by Simon Fletcher. So Malone still has some time. San Diego down by 24 to 3. Well, I agree with you on this one. Uh, yep. Third down it, now. It's such a critical. It really is. Everybody was for San Diego, yeah. And unlucky for San Diego, they had everybody on the left side in patterns. Nobody was on the right side, so when Malone tries to scramble around to the right side, he had nobody to throw the football to. Miller is put way out to the left. Pretty good second quarter for Mark Malone. You better get rid of it. Finally does, and his receiver falls down to the end zone. And it was six points, too. Darren Flutie lost his footing of the end zone as he was trying to get away from Randy Robbins, a strong safety, number 48. Well, Mark Malone must be used to this. I could just understand. He'd probably say, well, this has happened to me a lot of times. Here's a guy wide open in the end zone. He floats it out there. If he had, if this guy keeps his feet at six points, watch Darren Flutie. Watch and look at Coach Saunders. Dejection. 
Now we're down to 58 seconds to go. Third down and 10. They can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. The ball is just outside the 10-yard line. Watch James. There he is. Uh-uh. Out of bounds at the five. Mike Harden, the defensive captain, a tough pro bowler, makes the hit. Randy Robbins applying pressure. Well, I think everybody in the ballpark knew that Mark Malone was going to go to his number one receiver here, Lionel James, and he gets on the outside. And look how Mike Harden kept that inside position on the tackle. Now Mark Malone wants another timeout. James caught three balls for 41 yards. You know, the last marker, week it showed fourth down over there before the last time, and it actually was only third down, bro. Yeah, they made a mistake in the marker over there. Last week against uh, Los Angeles, the Raiders, James caught three balls for 41 yards. Boy, this little guy can really create some excitement. Well, from 85 to 87, over 4,475 yards. Five receptions today for 51 yards for Lionel James. That's all purpose yards I'm talking about. Mr. James, kickoff returns, punt returns. NFL Live at halftime with Lynn Bourbon and Paul McGuire. I'm sure that Paul will have some interesting things to... He always does, doesn't he? Yes, he will definitely have a statement to make. So Mark Malone with fourth down and goal. Well, the key to this defensive play now for Denver will be wherever number 26 lines up. Somebody's going to have to watch him very carefully. He's lined up in the left halfback spot right here. And Earl watch Eric Sievers, number 85. Early split wide to the right, Miller to the left. Here we go. Did they run a draw? Would well, they have the guts enough to run a draw? Yes. Yes, they would. Mecklenburg stops the play. Ryan and Smith help out. Denver takes over. You know, I would have liked that play if it, they would have cross-blocked up front, Merle. That was almost like a sweep, a delayed draw sweep. Now, you watch, there's nobody hit up the middle here. You can't see it. But there's your left guard pulling, and he doesn't block anybody, and Jim Ryan makes the stop. So Mecklenburg, Robbins, and Ryan, and you'll see them all on this tackle. If that would have been right up the middle, I think they may have scored. A little draw play right up the middle, right over the center. Instead, they took it too wide. The Broncos stopped the Chargers, and you just have to admire the way these Chargers keep coming back. They're, they're down 24-3, but every possession, they just seem to try a little harder and hang in there. I think, I think that's a reflection of, of their young coach. There's no quit in this football team. Joe Collier's defense. You just saw the man along. There he is, Joe Collier, who's been the defensive coordinator here for a number of years, one-time head coach of Buffalo. But he has done uh, an outstanding job with his defensive unit. Clock running with 20 seconds to go, and the Broncos are going to let it run out. So we have reached the midway point of the ball game. The Broncos with 10 in the first quarter and 14 in the second period will take a 24-3 lead into the dressing room at halftime. And Paul Horning, we saw a different look. Denver offense on the last series on the Dorsett drive. Well, Dorsett looked great in that second quarter. He's already got about 81 yards rushing. But you know what also impressed me is Mark Malone. He takes over as a quarterback here in the second quarter, and he throws for almost 100 yards. A turning point as far as the San Diego Charger offense. This is fourth down. Mark Malone scrambles out to the right side. Now watch Darren Flutie. He's down in the end zone. There you see it. He slipped down. He was wide open. That would have been six points. And that could have gotten the San Diego Chargers back in his football game, at least a lot closer. And Mark Malone is the man that uh, certainly has been very impressive for San Diego. And coming on in the second quarter, he did not play at all last week against the Los Angeles Raiders. Uh, Raiders Loffenberg had won the job in uh, the uh, summer sessions, the preseason four games, and looked very good. But when uh, Al Saunders turned this team over to, to Mark Malone, he started to make some moves. Well, Loffenberg had a very, very hard first quarter. He went all the way last week in their opening game, but he only completed two out of eight in the first quarter. So he switches to Mark Malone, and Mo Mark Malone had a pretty good second quarter, Murrow. He was 12 out, uh, 7 out of 12 for 97 yards, and he had the Chargers 
uh, down inside the 20 on two occasions. They only came up with only three points. So uh, if you cannot put that ball into the end zone, especially when you're trailing by three touchdowns, you're going to be uh, you're in for a long year. Meanwhile, we saw Laufenberg warming up. Meanwhile, Elway's role in the second quarter in that last big drive changed a little bit. Well, it sure was. They, they handed it off to number 33, and I think it gave the fans here a little something to expect. Tony Dorsett had a wonderful first half. He 14 rushes for 81 yards, a long of 21 yards, and that was that touchdown run. He wasn't even touched off the right side, and I really have to say the, the blocking up front. For, for Denver has been sensational. Those five guys on the inside and a big tight end, Arson Mobley, have been doing a wonderful job blocking as evidence. You know, they've got 99 yards rushing already here in the first half. So uh, total 200, over 250 yards in offense, and that is the key. That's the storyboard of this first, first half, Merle. So we're getting ready for the second half now. 